I've just been training, man. It's been basically a uh, a bunch of healing. You know, I broke my ribs in that fight, and it you know it's not the most debilitating injury, but it it takes forever to heal. So I was doing that, and then got right into training camp, and it's been going good. My weight got pretty heavy. I was about 160 solid, and uh, and so been watching my weight and just. Training hard. We've got Dwayne Bang Ludwig that came in to start taking over our, our head coaching position, and all our other coaches are still there. So it's 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 been awesome, man. What's Dwayne been like? You know, being the new addition. You know, he's just super pumped and motivated to put his knowledge out there, which is which is great. And you know, I wasn't. I've always known Dwayne just a little bit through the sport. Been a fan of his as a fighter, but he's he's meshing well. He's got a great personality, he's really funny and, and just a workhorse. So that's what you gotta be to be part of our team is, is be able to work your butt off and and he takes it serious. His goals are to to build our team to the best team in the world and, and I think that's what we're on track to do. Do you guys let anybody just walk in the door and join Team Alpha Male or is there like initiation process or anything like that? Well they gotta come and sign up at the gym and then initiation process is how long can you hang? You know, it's not easy to do what we do, we, you know, we call people out if they're coming per periodically and 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 not consistent. You know, just say, hey, you know, might not be the right place for you. But uh, people that can hang, they they show up and they keep showing up. So that's that's kind of how the process happens. It's uh, you know, if you're gonna hang out with people that are running, you gotta get up and run alongside of them. I don't assume you get too many drifters outside of you know in, in Northern California as opposed to like a city in Vegas where everybody kind of moves to. No one really moves to Sacramento unless it's to really be part of the team. Is that how it is for you guys? Yeah, we have quite a few guys that just come, you know, make it their goal to get out there and uh, and and be a part of of, of the team and. And a lot, of, a lot of guys have come and, and had great things happen, like Joseph Benavides is the guy that has done that, and Justin Buckles, and um, you know, some of the more established guys. There's also you know Lance Palmer and Chris Holdsworth, <clears throat> guys that are coming from different parts of the state and the country. And uh, you know it's, it's, it's a unique bunch of guys, and it's all like-minded, moving in the right direction. When are we going to see a heavyweight fight out of Team Alpha Male? <laughs> We have a we have a we have a couple of heavyweight fighters. We have uh, Freddie Big. I think he's four and one right now, and he's a heavyweight fighter. We've got Mikhail Venikov, who's a 70, 85 pounder. Keto Andrews is just on the Ultimate Fighter. Uh, Scott Nelson, he's another uh, 75, 85 pounder. Uh, Jeremy Freitag, uh, Adam Corrigan. We've got a we've got a, a a pretty big group of guys. We just got to get him out in the in the limelight and, and continue to grow. But we're looking for some bigger guys, so guys, you want to be with the best team in the world, come hang out. If you're a cool, cool dude that can work hard. What about some alpha females? We actually have Veronica Rothenhauser, who's you know, a, oh, a internet savage. sensation right now. She's She's got like five million hits. I need another pen. She's got like three million, or five million hits on her five second knockout, and she just had her pro debut. And uh, she's in there every day with us. So she's one of the taller 45-pounders uh, on the team. <laughs> she's uh, about six foot. You like watching women's MMA? I, I love women's MMA. I think it's always interesting to see chicks throw down. You know, I remember in the schoolyard, it was always girl fights that are the most entertaining ones to watch. Mm. You know, boob might slip out, there's balls of hair everywhere, <laughs> and they're ruthless, man. So uh, I, I enjoy it. Do you think uh, the chicks make up for heart what they lack maybe in technique? I think women are better at learning technique than men because they don't think they know everything. You know, if you go in and teach somebody how to punch and they already think they know how to punch, it's a lot it's a lot harder. Women are very technical. It's just a matter of them dedicating their lives to it. So it's just a matter of time before we get more opportunities for the women. Do you guys ever have to tell anybody, you know, got to kick rocks, got to get out of here? You can't. We have had to tell a couple guys they need to kick rocks, you know, uh, just because they've been inconsistent enough and, and um, you know, if there's a conflict of interest or something. But I really can't remember anyone that that has wanted to stick around that, that wasn't welcome. Do you worry about spies? <laughs> I don't really worry about spies because, you know, in, in mixed martial arts, 
there's a bunch of moves out there. There's no secret to what what's working. So the the ability to to learn a bunch of stuff and and make it work for you is so individual that. I mean, there's no secret. We're working on wrestling, jiu-jitsu, boxing, kickboxing. Uh, we've got a couple of little key things, but we're training them so much that they can't be stopped. I asked you this a while back. Have you put any thought into a, a new nickname by any chance? Because you're getting, you're getting up there. Dude, you've been around for a while. Are you still going to be the California kid forever? Uh, I think so, man. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what the next phase of, of life takes. We could do the California king or... Uh, it's got to be something cool, but California Kid works for me. The King's got a nice ring to it. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I like that. That's we'll fun. see, though. So what's going on with you? Uh, you know, you got the, the fight in, in Anaheim. You excited for that? I'm super excited. Chad Mendes and I are both fighting on that card. And, uh, you know, it's close to home. All of California is is my place. So it's, it's you know, like fighting in my backyard. I, I feel like uh, the, the opponent is going to be... Make for an exciting matchup with Ivan Menjivar. He always brings exciting fights, and and, uh, and you guys have history. And we have a history. We have some unfinished business, so I, I think it's gonna be another another aspect of this fight that's gonna be cool for me. So uh, I'm looking forward to it, and everything that comes along with it. You know, how's the body? I know you had some, you were doing some injuries and stuff like that. Are you 100 percent? I am 100 percent. This has been a, a, a rough training camp, but this is a rough sport. You know, so rough not, and like it's, it's been difficult to get through, or rough like you've been dealing with injuries. Some or? little injuries here and there, but you know, I think back to some of my first fights. I went, I I got in a bench pressing contest back in 2004, and uh, just messing around with my buddy. I don't ever bench press, and I was just messing around with him, and I injured my chest, and it ended up deteriorating a whole left side of my body. And for the longest time, it was weird. I couldn't even do push-ups or anything. I fought five fights like that, <laughs> you know. But that was that was when I was making a living as a fighter. I had to fight, you know, five to seven times a year. And uh, yeah, this sport is is not a sport where you're always going to be 100%. And I feel about as 100% as you can be for for having a, a intense, long training camp. What about mentally? Is it has it been difficult for you to get ready for this camp? Uh, it hasn't been mentally tough for me to. To, to be in camp, just I, I enjoy what I'm doing. So, you know, this is, this is something I feel really lucky in this world to, to be a guy that gets to follow his passion and, and make a living around it. Been really lucky. Uriah, aside from the fact that Torque is now on the map in the MMA apparel world, is there anything you want to let the readers know? You know what? Torque is doing uh, is doing an amazing job of, of fitting the times. You know, this is a sport where you know we have a lot of big companies that come in and then lose their wad and and, and, and exit out. We're here to stay. We're here to get behind fighters. We're here to uh, be a brand for the, the people that love our sport, and, and that's what makes it so cool. We're also doing a new website called MMADraft.com, which is all about the amateurs. It's it's about you know these kids that start from a young age that are trying to make a name for, the, for themselves in the sport, all the way to people that are right on the verge of, of making the the pro debut. And it's going to be a lot of tools and a lot of uh, uh, cool things that that are going to give people a uh, push in the right direction to be professional fighters and so check that out make a profile if you're a if you're a young fighter an amateur fighter out there sweet and tell them what's the best mma website on the internet we got the middle easy man the most creative uh out of the box website out there for mma there's some funny stuff on that on that site so check it out